So first of all, I'm delighted to be here today and to discuss priorities of uh, Latvia's presidency in the Council of the European Union. Ladies and gentlemen, as you probably all know, this is the first Latvia's presidency in the Council. And we assume it indeed against a backdrop of economic and geopolitical challenges especially after those brutal events in Paris, human tragedies in the Mediterranean, and the ongoing conflicts in our closest neighborhood, uh, would it be the, on the southern shores of the Mediterranean, or speaking about the eastern, eastern Ukraine? I mean, challenges that lie ahead of us, those are obvious. We believe that uh, we are going to have a hard-working presidency, pragmatic and determined. A maturing member state with experience in austerity, which is uh, probably not the least important one currently, and reform, again, hardship and, and, and progress. And uh, it is this approach uh, which inspires our presidency logo. Uh, kind of the circular grinding stone you can see at the top of, of um, this uh, yes, banner, uh, representing both productivity and nourishment, but also dynamism and, and, and energy. We want to strengthen Europe's recovery, restore confidence in its politics, and inspire belief in its future. So, ladies and gentlemen, the EU has a clear set of priorities. These are laid out um, in the strategic agenda, the so-called TRIO program of presidencies, which we elaborated together with our Italian and Luxembourgish friends, and also the, uh, the political guidance uh, issued by the President of the Commission, Mr. Juncker. Latvia doesn't want to add to this list. Oh, sorry. We want to implement it, not reinvent the wheel to move it forward. The Latvian presidency has two broad objectives. Uh, first, it's to steer the work of the Council in order, as we say, to fully overcome the economic and financial crisis. I mean, this is something uh, which is dictated uh, by, by, by our <clears throat> challenges that we mentioned before. And the second also, this is to promote stability, security, and development in uh, <clears throat> the neighborhood and in the world, I would say also globally, working hand-in-hand hand, uh, with the High Representative and the European External Action Service. In order to reach those two objectives, we are going to concentrate on three priorities, three clear themes, competitiveness, digital market, and engaged Europe. First, of course, we want Europe to be more competitive. Economic growth remains weak across Europe. Unemployment is too high, and investment is too low. We will use our presidency to carry out a growth-oriented policy. Uh, this means, of course, a new investment drive, one that produces concrete benefits for citizens and reflects the diversity and circumstances of each and every member state. Uh, we need to create right regulatory framework that can generate private investment in strategically important areas. In this context, I would like to highlight strengthening of the internal market, as I mentioned, launching the energy union, and working on the digital single market. So, on investments, we welcome President Juncker's 
so-called 315 billion investment uh, plan, and we are ready to fast-track a proposal in the Council to ensure that we have a European fund for strategic investments in place already by June. We will continue work to strengthen the single market, to unlock its potential and unleash its benefits with a renewed focus on better regulation and implementation and recognition of all four freedoms as its cornerstones. Placing in its heart the new energy union with effective governance and drawing on the best examples of regional energy cooperation, for example, such as in the Baltic region. I think this is another uh, major kind of the task that we are putting ahead of us. I mean, energy union is a new and very important initiative. A high-level conference already on the 6th of February will be the first ministerial discussion on the energy union as well as on the accompanying action plan. The first formal exchange of views during the Energy Council is foreseen already in March. We believe the discussion could help to pave the way for adoption of the Energy Union strategy at the March European Council, which would follow just uh, shortly after the ministerial discussion. And of course, we will implement and st the streamlined European semester based on the goals of the Europe 2020 strategy. And we will promote action on industrial competitiveness, social dialogue, and economic and monetary union. Second, we want to make Europe more digital. We want to harness Europe's digital potential and work towards creating a genuine digital single market. Uh, we think that the Commission's plans to re release the digital single market strategy in May uh, should uh, be kind of the, uh, should I say, um, not the milestone, but, uh, but, but very important incentive and, and, and also provide necessary instrument for us to proceed further. We believe that EU policies to develop digital potential should steer into three directions. It's boosting economy and growth. I mean, something which is closely related to the first overall objective of our discussion, of our priorities. But also providing safety in digital environment and promoting modernization of public sector and also digital skills. I mean, this is something which is also extremely important because um, having aging populations in Europe, probably except for Ireland, as far as I know, uh, this is also very important that uh, those people who are, uh, should I say, already uh, beyond their working age or probably approaching uh, uh, their retirement uh, that they have this opportunity to obtain new skills uh, to adapt them to, 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 to new requirements of the market, labor market. Digital aspects, those digital aspects that I mentioned should be promoted by default to help transform Europe into the world's leading knowledge-based economy. We want to help lead work on the new digital strategy uh, to forge consensus and, and, and drive its implementation. So in concrete terms, we also plan to host digital agenda assembly in Riga uh, towards the, the end of our presidency in June 17th and 18th, which we will, by fact, organize together with the European Commission. 
I mean, very close and very important issue, and as far as I understand, also very important for uh, for Ireland and uh, what we would take into account that we will take forward work on data protection, cyber security, and consumer rules, and we will pursue balanced telecommunications reform. Third priority, we want Europe to be more engaged as a global actor. We stand ready to support High Representative Mogherini in forging EU unity and striving for peace and stability. And speaking of the EU unity, I think this is especially important when we take into account a kind of the divisive issues that we are facing recently, including the uh, future of Europe's relations with Russia. So nowhere this is more pressing than in our own neighborhood. So we will support, first of all, the review of European neighborhood policy. For obvious reasons, or probably, I mean, for those people who, 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 who are not so immersed in um, Latvia's history, I should say also, because uh, those are areas where we have the most of expertise, and those are relations with our eastern neighbors, with whom, uh, for one or another reason, uh, we were um, part of, 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 of the same, either Russian Empire, for probably something more than 200 years, or the Soviet Empire. So th that, this is the part of the world that we understand the best. So we intend to pay particular attention to the Eastern uh, partnership countries and enhance the EU cooperation with them. And we will host the Eastern Partnership Summit in Riga already in May 21st and 22nd. So the summit itself will be accompanied by the uh, civil society forum and also a uh, business forum uh, with those countries. We believe that summit will provide the opportunity to evaluate the progress since uh, the previous summit in Vilnius, reconfirm partnerships' strategic importance, and identify Europe's I mean, further strategic guidance for, for Europe's relations with those countries. This must send a clear signal to, uh, of EU support for Eastern Partnership that policy is not dead, and also to those who look forward towards it. Speaking of, e of Eastern Partnership, uh, we must strengthen uh, the partnership by tailoring our approach to each country. Uh, it cannot be one size fits all, as we probably, in uh, mm, being sometimes too, too uh, self-righteous, we, we thought that um, the very idea of European integration or the very idea of adherence to what we consider as uh, Europeans, European values-based uh, cooperation should be strong enough uh, uh, for those countries to, 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 to get more involved with us, uh, probably to, to embrace the, the entirety of the European policies. As to the neighborhood policy, of course, we will not abandon our southern neighbors. As the responsible presidency, a good um, caretaker of EU policies, uh, we, will, uh, we will try to promote as far as we can, especially taking into account, uh, again, uh, I, I refer to our existing expertise and, and, and experiences related to, to one part of, of neighborhood. I mean, to compare that with the southern neighborhood, I would say we, we would have a relatively 
uh, restricted or relatively limited expertise there, so we would turn uh, for help, for assistance to our partners, uh, to countries uh, which would traditionally have uh, their, probably their own interests or who invested in some regional expertise. For example, as Ireland does in, in, in areas related to the, for example, Mid Middle East peace process, by the way, or to our um, southern colleagues and allies, uh, like our Spanish friends with whom together uh, already, a, on, I think on April 13th, is it, we will organize a conference on, on the southern neighborhood uh, in Barcelona. And another issue related to other, our southern neighborhood, uh, which we will pay particular attention, and this is the issue of migration. Migration issues will be high on our agenda, notwithstanding or in particular taking into account uh, its impact on Europe's internal security. But also, I would say, I must say that engaged Europe also means global Europe. We will work to update and to reinvigorate the EU Central Asia strategy. Again, this is one region where we can add value to EU policies because of uh, our particular regional expertise. Um, key priorities for uh, this cooperation with Central Asia will be security, um, educational issues, and uh, uh, sustainable development, specifically uh, looking at those environmental problems that countries of Central Asia are facing. Of course, speaking about the global role of the European Union, uh, we as presidency will advance as much as possible trade agreements with Canada, Japan, and the United States, uh, uh, the TTIP. And of course, we will carry forward important work on Europe's security strategy. Uh, in the area of security defense, I mean, issues related also to foreign fighters, migration that I mentioned before, and its impact on Europe's security, and not only on Europe's security, Issues of cybercrime, cross-border crime, radicalization, which leads also to, to, to the issues of the fight against terrorism. Last but not least, and probably especially uh, taking into account uh, uh, Ireland's specific uh, expertise, we should continue work on, on development. <coughs> Uh, especially taking into, in, into account that uh, we just started or we just opened, we had the grand opening event in Riga of the European Year of Development. So this uh, would, would also be uh, that we would uh, pay particular attention. And of course, I mean, speaking about the, the external uh, policies, which in fact is partly internal one, of course, the issue of further enlargement. As far as uh, it depends on the presidency. We will do our utmost, but then, of course, uh, one should be uh, one should be absolutely clear that now the ball is on the side of those countries which want to join the union. They must complete their homework to advance in either in accession negotiations or in uh, the integration process, actually, to acquire the status of the candidate country. And again, another issue which I, I know that is, is, uh, has its uh, reflection in, 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 in some debate here in Ireland, and this is another important event this year, will be the Paris Conference on Climate Change. We are determined to ensure the necessary Council's involvement in order to pave the way for a successful conference at the end of this year. Uh, whether we will succeed, it's difficult to say. Until now, negotiations 
I mean, the last uh, round in uh, preparatory round in Lima brought. I mean, it, it, it brought some encouraging signs, but, but probably not enough for us to rest in our efforts. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the ambition of Latvia's presidency, indeed, to help build a more competitive, digital, and engaged Europe. Besides what I already mentioned, we will work diligently to on files such as justice and finance and drive forward efforts to ensure we have the right, fra right framework in place for in institutional cooperation in the EU. I do not want to suggest that those six months or rather five remaining months that this is a particular window of opportunity. Uh, but we do sense a clear opportunity to, to, to energize union, uh, indeed, to, to bring at least some things around. So, so far for my kind of the formal and public speech, thank you very much for your attention, and I'm open for your questions, and I'll try my best to answer them as exhaustive as possible. Thank you. Thank you.